Hi everyone, we are going to talk about a new course that I have just uh, introduced and it is about the micro foundations of macroeconomics. So at the intermediate level, uh, macroeconomics becomes interesting when we analyze the, the size of the government, we analyze the money supply, we analyze the inflation, we analyze unemployment. So all these things play a very important role and when you have the understanding of ISN and LLM framework, then ISLM framework gives you a complete idea about the movement of goods and money market. But those dimensions are important and we always try to see macroeconomics from that perspective because macroeconomics speaks about the, the macroeconomic indicators from your GDP, from your inflation, from your employment from your all the indicators that explains the, the general overview of the economy. So maybe at the top level it can be called as from the top uh, point of view that from the, the economy point of view which all indicators are important. But it can be understood from the micro perspective also. So we are trying to see that how a particular firm when it reacts to different policies how the macroeconomic indicators are going to be impacted. And in the same way when I say that we have the consumers, so consumers are also having some demand and this consumer always tries to, to maximize his or her profit. So when I say that consumer is going to maximize the profit or a consumer is going to uh, maximize the utility, when we have the uh, consumer asking for more and more utility more and more satisfaction or when it is asking for more and more goods and services and what are the macroeconomic implications. At the time when we are in a completely new normal environment when we have uh, shocks like COVID-19 and in these environments it has become I would say critically important to examine the micro behavior of different agents in the economy. So, which all are the micro behavior uh, of the agents when we talk about the agents talking about the micro aspects of the economy. So, of, of course, the normal name comes in our mind is about the consumer and firm. So, here we will be trying to see that if we are seeing from the microeconomics perspective talking about utility, talking about the consumer equilibrium, talking about what happens to consumer equilibrium when you have sudden change in either the income preference of the individuals or if there is some engineer shock coming to this individual. So maybe the government is going to increase the tax, maybe the income that this representative consumer was going to get from somewhere it is going to be impacted. So how the overall demand which when we aggregate these consumers at the macro level talking about aggregate consumption which is one of the important variables in macroeconomics then how this particular variable is going to be impacted. So can we draw some inference from for the macroeconomist also. So that is the underlying idea behind this particular uh, course and we will spend some more time not just trying to understand the tenets of the microeconomic foundations but also we will spend some more time talking about how we can uh, apply this micro phenomena in different types of economic activities. So in case of money supply, so can we apply the micro foundations in case of trade, can we apply the micro foundations in case of the investment demand, can we apply the micro foundations at form level. So all these dimensions will be covered. So in a half an hour time we will try to understand the micro foundations of uh, macroeconomics from the microeconomic analysis perspective and also from the macroeconomic analysis. So I hope this course will give you a sufficient background about the behavior of different agents in the economy and we can fragment those agents into different uh, components of macroeconomic models and we try to aggregate at the economy level. So we will be talking mostly in the framework of closed economy that how these uh, representative consumers and firms are going to react. So I have prepared some slides and I will be sharing with you. So here is the reference. So, so when I say about the, the uh, consumer, so here I am mentioning about, here I have the, 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 this is the brief outline of the 
topics that I will be covering under uh, the representative agent, representative forms, different microeconomic agents. But one thing here I would like to mention that here we will be talking only in the current period terms, the static model, it is not a dynamic model. What is different be between a static and dynamic model? In a static model, we talk about one period model. So, under that period, you do not have any future period, you only have the current period. So, whatever you are earning, whatever income that you have, whatever consumption that you do, whatever amount that you save, you are going to utilize all these things in the current period itself. There will not be any future period. So, when I mention that you, there will not be any future period, then we are not going to talk about that how this particular representative consumer, uh, consumer saving is going to help this consumer in future. So, that is not the, the purpose here. The purpose is that in the current period environment, can I understand the behavior of different agents in the economy and can I draw uh, some inference for the macroeconomic picture. So, we have to now think. So, here we will be having the reference book. Then the microeconomic foundations of macroeconomics, then we have the representative consumers, these are the micro agents. So, we are we will be talking about. So, the representative consumer when I mention about, so this will have certain behaviors. So, we will be tr we will try to characterize the representative consumer that how this representative consumer is going to have. So, he will have the utility preference then he will be also having subject to, so there will be some kind of restrictions on, there will be some kind of limit on the income of the representative agent. So, this representative agent will also face a budget constraint. So, budget constraint will try to define. Second thing is about the consumer optimization. So, when I say consumer optimization, so we will try to see that what is the optimal level of consumption of this representative consumer. But here you have to also uh, note that we will be talking about a single period model that is also called the one period model. In one period model, we will have the setup like uh, consumer and leisure, leisure in the sense that we are trying to examine that if the particular representative consumer exists and if he or she has been given chance to earn some amount of money at the real wage, how this particular representative consumer is going to utilize that income. And given the time that this particular representative consumer has, so which is about the 24 hours in a day, suppose this representative consumer works for 8 hours and earns some kind of income through working in a, a farm or doing some activity. Leisure here implies that this particular uh, implies that this particular representative consumer is not willing to work. So, even he is not working for 8 hours, he is just uh, utilizing 24 hours for just doing extracurricular activities or something interested with for which he does not earn any money. So, non-income generating activities are part of the leisure. So, maybe he would like to spend some more time going for photography rather than going to work. So, those things we will be trying to see. Here, the consumption means that whatever income that this particular guy is going to earn, it is going to translate into the consumption. But then, there will be a subject to how many hours of time uh, this particular uh, representative consumer is going to devote for work. If he is not going to devote that much amount of time, then there will be increase in leisure. So, we will be trying to see that how with the help of consumer and leisure, the representative agent is going to decide about his income behavior, uh, his utility preference, how this particular representative consumer is going to optimize his level of consumption given the real wage and the leisure opportunity that this particular representative consumer has. And based on that, we will trying to derive the labor supply curve that what happens when we have the uh, increase in uh, labor supply. So, whether this representative consumer when he or she has income, whether this representative consumer is going to see or going to increase the number of hours that he or she was supplying in the market. So, number of labor hour if he or she is supplying the market or going to the firm as in supply of labor, then he or she gets income. So, whether the preference of getting more income is important or going for leisure is important, that is the underlying idea. So, when we talk about at the macro level that what should be the equilibrium wage rate for the labor. And at the macro level, when we talk about the country level policies, when we design, design about the, the wage policies of the or labor policies of the government. So, it is not always uh, good to have a higher income 
and that is the ultimate thing and that leads to a more productivity or more supply of labor that is not the case. If you are giving more income then it also means that this representative consumer would feel that uh, it is enough for him to survive and he may not like to supply that much amount of labor that he used to supply. So, there will be some kind of a role of income and substitution effects here and that we will be examining that the higher uh, increase in wage rate does not imply the increase in leisure also. Leisure uh, sometime higher increase in wage rate does not imply the increase in labor hour. It may also imply the increase in leisure hour. So, this particular representative consumer would like to go for more leisure than compared to working for more number of hours. So, that is why when you have a when you talk about the equilibrium wage rate at the macro level then you have to take into account this thing that what incentivizes the worker to work for more number of hours rather than going for leisure. So, if you have a, a leisure variable playing very important role then you have to think about that what will be the optimal. For that reason we will have consumer optimization and the labor curve. Then the next agent as I talked about that there are forms operating and these forms hire the con uh, representative consumer and pay them the uh, and, and once they hire the representative consumers then these representative consumers they get paid from the, re the representative forms and once uh, we are trying to define then there will be role of marginal productivity, then there will be role of marginal product of labor, what happens if this particular representative form is going to change the technology. If this representative form is going to change the technology, then of course, there will be higher productivity increase in, in labor. So, whether the form would like to hire the same amount of labor or he would like to work for lesser number of labor. So, those dynamics will be involved. Third thing when we are trying to see that we have now defined the representative consumer, we have defined the representative form, how can we arrive at equilibrium? So, when I say that we are arriving at equilibrium, so here there will be a macroeconomic picture playing a role. So, here we will be assuming that suppose uh, income identity that we always assume in case of macroeconomics is y is equal to c plus i plus g plus x minus m. Here we are ruling out the external sector outlook. So, we do not have x minus m. Here we will be simply talking about y is equal to c plus g. So, when we have y is equal to c plus g then we will be talking, we will be trying to arrive at this identity with the help of the, the kind of Bayard constraint that we have specified for the representative consumer and the kind of production function we have used for the representative form. So, these two are critically important to examine. Now, here if you think about the reference book or the recommended readings for this particular lecture is the Stephen D. Williamson, then we have Sanjay K. Chug, a book of modern macroeconomics, it also talks about one period model, but Williamson book is more organized and more popular I would say. Then if you want to understand the micro foundation that from where this idea came that we were so happy about analyzing the, the GDP, inflation, unemployment, interest rate. But suddenly how come we started going back at the form level and the consumer level and then we started uh, then we started analyzing or then we started getting the inference for the macroeconomic policies. So, when it was it started from where it had. So, if you want to see then there is a very good book transforming modern macroeconomics exploring disequilibrium micro foundations. This particular book is really important uh, from the perspective of having an overview. So, it is up to you, but we will be mostly uh, uh, sticking ourselves to the um, uh, Williamson macroeconomics and we will be also seeing from different sources that how we can understand the one period model better. So, here we have let us spend some time thinking about microeconomic foundations. So, I have already given you sufficient idea about microeconomic foundations or macroeconomics, but if you try and understand uh, from the perspective of the representative consumer, then representative consumer is a critical agent in the economy and the reactions or the actions of representative consumer play a very important role in deciding about the macroeconomic policies. For example, if you aggregate the individual preferences of different consumers, so suppose in India we are having the population of uh, one, uh, 139 or 40 crores, out of this if suppose uh, we assume that the, there are around 70 crore or 60 crore consumers 
living and asking or utilizing certain services, demanding goods. So, if we try to arrive at some macroeconomic picture that how much they consume in one year. Now, the aggregating variable that we call it consumption, this will have this will have to take into account the heterogeneous demand of all these consumers. So, in order to arrive at the macroeconomic picture, we try to uh, devise certain norms, certain rules, assume certain, uh, certain, certain parameters and certain assumptions, then we work on the model. So, from macroeconomics perspective, which is linked with the macroeconomics, this can be justified in this way. Similarly, we employ the labor. So, once I am talking about labor, then labor plays very important role because it is also one of the important uh, variables in the macroeconomics and also in the microeconomics. So, here labor implies we are talking about the consumer only and but when we deal with the with the supply of labor to the firm, then we try to define the representative consumer also as labor. So, because this particular labor will have certain uh, characteristics with regard to the production at what point this labor will be more demanded what happens when the marginal productivity of labor is greater than the wage rate. So, whether at that point this representative consumer will be given some kind of preference asking about things. So, that plays very important role and then once the, the representative consumer is hired by firm then we try to see at the intersection of this plays very important role and from there we try to define the macroeconomic implications. Now, if you just uh, uh, if you want to see that how we can get the the concrete idea about microeconomic foundations, then who are in 2010 utilizing reduction the microeconomic foundations of macroeconomics, he tried to at least give some idea about what should be the appropriate approach of understanding the specific to general approach, which means that we are starting with the form. Then we are going to the uh, uh, at very micro agent level. So, firm and the consumer we are starting. Then we we try to uh, to draw the inference at the macro picture. So, which means that we are moving from the specific to general. Normally, we have the macroeconomic talking about only general, but here we are talking from the consumer, then firm, then we talk about the markets, we talk about the different agents in the economy, for example, government and then we try to deduct from these things to at the macro level. So, here we try to understand from that perspective. Now, let us have an example that how does it look like? Let us first deal with the macro level. At macro level, what do we have? So, here we have uncertain economic prospects which means that you have some shocks in the economy and this shock has created. So, you can think about the unprecedented shock that we are having the COVID-19. So, COVID-19 shock started. So, this creates an uncertain economic prospect. From here, we go to increase in precautionary saving. So, the moment we have increase in precautionary saving, which means that you are trying to save more to deal with the unforeseen situations. Now, if you are going for precautionary saving, it means that you are going to compromise on your normal savings. So, maybe you had uh, 10 types of, of food items in a month, but now because of this uncertain outlook, you are having only 5 types and 5 types uh, whatever money that you used to spend on 5 types, you are going to save for because you are not sure that how the future is going to unfold. So, if you are not sure how future is going to unfold, then you have at micro level. So, this is the macro variable. The micro variable is the consumer. So, consumer is reacting with precautionary saving. This precautionary saving is leading to decrease in consumption spending and this, this decrease in consumption spending that you have that is called paradox of thrift also sometime. So, decrease in consumption spending again it worsens the economic downturn. So, this is the macro outcome that we have. So, here we have uncertain economic prospect then the economic downturn, but this uncertain economic prospect drives the this idea also that in the economy when you have uncertainty, this will increase the precautionary savings 
precautionary savings further propels the decrease in consumption spending. Decrease in consumption spending will again uh, uh, augment the scenarios of economic downturn. Economic downturn will again go for more uncertainty about the future and this will lead to decrease in consumption spending. So, you can think about the interlinked reactions that we have in the economy. So, why micro uh, why microeconomic analysis becomes very important because here we have the uncertain economic prospect you can think about that in an economy normal functioning economy if this economy is going to face very uncertain situation then how the agents in the economy agents in the economy are going to react. So, once I say about agents in the economy are going to react then here it is increase in precautionary saving then we have decrease in consumption spending again it worsens the scenario then again you have economic downturn and once I am saying about more uncertainty about future then here it is what is called the decrease in consumption spending and this will continue. So, in an economy if you are ignoring the role of micro agents and focusing only on the macro so maybe you will be having a, some idea about uh, the money supply interest rate but if you until unless you try and work out with the uh, micro agents then you will not be able to break this chain. So, breaking this chain is important because if this is the uncertain outcome and if because of these reactions you have you are falling into economic downturn better to react here itself and try to work out. So, maybe some kind of extra incentive may be given to the households that you do not have to worry about you have certain income and government supports provides minimum wages unemployment benefits because of these, these people have uh, some some uh, amount of income and they also have the assurance that even if there will be a bad situation in future there will be something left for them to utilize it for consumption and the risk of getting into complete economic downturn can be avoided. So, I hope these flow charts make uh, you the under, make you to understand the why we are studying the microeconomic foundations. So, this particular analysis the Grabner and Kapler had given this idea and then they emphasize in their work that this is how it works. Now, when we talk about the model, how we uh, go about the model, how do we define those agents we require and how we can work out with the uh, modeling setup as such. So, now we will be uh, going into the model and we will work out and we will try to first specify the representative consumer because that is the most important part. Second thing is that we will work out with the consumption basket of the representative consumer that whether this representative consumer is having the what is the level of preference, what kind of uh, preference this representative consumer is going to have. We will not be getting deep into the macroeconomic foundation, but simple understanding about the indifference curve, the margin rate of substitutions will help you understand the model better. Then we have the forms which has technology, it employs labor, it pays wage to the uh, worker and then worker receives and then we try to define the, the labor demand supply scenario with the help of labor supply and also from the form side the marginal productivity of labor that will decide about the demand for labor. So, here the basic structure of the model is that first we define the representative consumer then we define the form. So, this is the, the ultimate idea that in this particular model we follow. Now, once we have defined these two then we have to work out that what is the optimal level of consumption and what is the optimum level for the firms to utilize labor and to employ labor. So, we will be working out with those criteria I think it is part of the microeconomics uh, when, when we say that consumer is at equilibrium when we have the marginal rate of substitutions right following the, the particular pattern and when it is tangent to the, the budget constraint. So, when your, your indifference curve is tangent to the budget constraint or marginal rate substitution is just equal to the ratios of the prices then there also we have. Now, here in competitive equilibrium we will be trying to see the how the actions of both representative uh, consumer and the representative firms are going to play a very important role. Can we draw uh, some kind of intersection, intersection between these two? Now, the competitive equilibrium becomes important because first we have to define 
and we have to work out with the size of the economy. So, what is the production possibility of this particular uh, firm uh, or what is the production possibility of this particular economy, at what rate uh, one good can be transformed into another and on top of that when we superimpose the condition of representative consumer that how this representative consumer is going to decide about then you have the role of uh, role of the equilibrium that we try to uh, arrive and that we call it as the competitive uh, competitive equilibrium so that we that will decide about the the rate of transformation of the the two goods that we have consumption and leisure and then how the firm is going to play important role and how the consumers are going to decide about their optimal level of consumption. So, these things are important and from here we will draw some macroeconomic implications that when we define the representative agent, when we define the form then how are we going to talk about. So, this will be really important to see and one more thing that you have to keep in mind that we will also be working with some kind of comparative statics, uh, uh, statics, comparative statics in the sense that if the representative consumer first we are when we are going to define the representative consumer then this representative consumer will have certain amount of, of income, some sources of income that this particular representative consumer is going to get. The moment we say sources of income then we will work out with some comparative statics and this comparative statics uh, give you the idea that what happens when there is a dividend increase, what happens when the wage rate increases, what happens when this representative consumer is going to think about the increase in uh, increase in dividend that he or she is receiving. So, will this lead to a different level of equilibrium or will this lead to increase in uh, will, will this lead to the direct parallel shift in the budget constraint of the representative consumer or it will be uh, different what will be the shape or shift in the budget constraint. So, that we will be examining. We will be also trying to see that how the firm is going to react with different set of marginal product conditions. So, I hope this particular lecture gives you sufficient idea about what are the roles of microeconomic foundations of macroeconomics. So, microeconomic foundations basically helps you understand the or draw the macroeconomic picture based on the actions of microeconomic agents. So, basically firm and the representative consumer. So, this is uh, for this lecture and we will continue in the ne next lecture from here and try to work out with some more detailed analysis of one period consumption leisure and the uh, we will also try to arrive at we will try to also work out with some more comparative statics that we will be discussing. Thank you. Thank you so much.